Hey guys, super quick video today. I'm just going to show you my uh, random level generator, my infinite random level generator, and then I'm going to show you some of the blueprints about how it works. So if I, can I fly through this? Yeah, there we go. You can see that levels are spawning in front of me. Oh, and I'm going to get stuck down here and probably die. No, I'm not. We're living, baby. We're living for now. And I can't really get out of here. Oh, yes, I can. I can jump. Yo. Yeah, so that's how it looks, right? Um, tiles will spawn in front of you and they'll despawn behind you as you travel through. So I'm just going to quickly go through the blueprints um, really super briefly. I'll do a step-by-step -step tutorial for this another time, but I just wanted to quickly show you so you can get the basic idea if you wanted to give this a crack yourself. Um, this is firing every tick. What we're doing is we're getting the player's position and mapping it to a an imaginary grid of the tile size, so in my case 10,000 units. So if the player's off at some distance of 100,000, that's going to be tile 10 by whatever on the Y. Um, so we're just taking their position and we're dividing it by a big amount, and the big amount is the width of the tile. So we're plotting the player's position on an imaginary grid where we're going to be putting our random levels. And then all we're doing is every frame we're checking if the player has changed coordinates, aka have they changed tiles. If they've changed tiles, then we're going to refresh which tiles should be loaded. We remove the old tiles first, add the new tiles after. The way that adding new tiles works is we do a nested for loop around the player's coordinates. So if the player's on like 3-3, three, three, we're going to be adding uh, some value to the X, some value to the Y, and generating a grid around that 3-3. Three, three. Um, and then what we're doing is we're just checking, is there a tile already there? If there's not, create a tile. Uh, if there is, do nothing essentially. It looks, it looks complicated and I've got to take some stuff out that isn't being used. But the words that I'm using is explaining the logic right now. So if there's no tile, create a tile. If there is a tile, don't bother. Now, when we create a tile, we're using uh, get streaming level, right? This node here. And we're getting a random package name from a list of levels up here. So you can view them in the editor, like that. And we're just getting a random one, creating an instance, um, setting its transform to the co the coordinates of the, the point on the grid, and just rotating it randomly, 90 degrees. Now, there's a bunch of other settings which I'm not going to go into because that's sort of not really the point. You can fine tune this and you can play with it and you can do all kinds of crazy shit. So that's the adding new info for new tiles, removing the old tiles, uh, every time this fires, we're just checking all of the coordinates that are loaded, right? So this is an infector structure. We're getting all the coordinates that have a loaded tile on it, a loaded level, and we're just checking are they inside the render range or are they outside the render range? And the way that that works is we get the coordinates of the tile, find that position in the world, get the coordinates of the player, find their position in the world, and then we check the distance between the two, and if the distance between the two is uh, greater than our render range in units tiles, so three tiles multiplied by the tile size, if the units, if it's greater, uh, then we unload it, so it, it vanishes, and that's why they disappear behind you as you move through the world. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the logic. Remove the old ones, spawn the new ones, um, and that's it. As you go through the map, they despawn and spawn and they follow the player. Now the other thing that I've got is on my HUD uh, I have a little render range thing and you, the player can input their float value there. The float value is rounded to an integer and then the integer set as the render range. So if I jump into the map, uh, let me just glide down. I could change this to, I don't know, 5 and instantly you see more tiles spawning off in the distance. So, 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 so if I jump up in the air Look at that. And if I set this down to 1, you can see them vanishing. And now we've just got a render range of one tile around the tile that we're on. And if we want two, we'll get two tiles around the tile that we're on. You could have, you would have just seen them spawn in if you were paying attention. Yep. And then as you move through, of course, when I get to the center of that tile, new tiles will spawn in. And this runs much smoother in a packaged version. It runs a little bit sketchy in the editor. When you're um, getting to, when you start spawning in new tiles, see that frame rate drop just there. 
whenever it changes the tiles, the frames drop a little bit. But that doesn't happen in the package game, which is actually really cool, and I'm really, really stoked that it doesn't. Um, that's it. I'm going to leave that there. If that was helpful, let me know. If you would like a step-by-step -step tutorial for this, let me know, because that will take quite a bit of time, and I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to do it yet if nobody's going to watch it. So <laughs> um, if you'd like a tutorial on this, let me know and maybe I can get around to doing it, but that's my infinite random level generator blueprint baby. Like, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> oh,